that a loyal customer is very valuable, but how do we create that valuable customer? How do we keep that valuable customer? Um, so we're gonna to talk today about missionary marketing and the four elements of it. Well, smart companies are using this fear of missing out in their marketing and their advertising. They're, they're creating a buzz that makes the consumer think, hey, how, how come I'm not a part of that? That looks like something I would like to be doing. As we get into these other um, missionary programs, keep in mind this fear of missing out and that there's ways that you can use that and capitalize that. I mentioned earlier the realtor that we bought our house from, the realtor we bought our business from, both of them continue uh, to email us. The one we bought our house from, he does something that, which I think is smart. He includes us on a mailing list of houses that are for sale right in our own neighborhood. Even though we're not in the market to buy one, it lets me know two things. It's, it's a way of him doing a comp for us. I can now see, oh, that house five doors down from me is selling for X amount. So it gives me a value of my own home but it reminds me that this particular realtor knows about my neighborhood. So if I go to sell my house a year from now or five years from now, I'm gonna use that guy because he's, he's proven to me through email that he understands the dynamics of my neighborhood. But you can take 10 minutes uh, on a mailing list and reach hundreds of people who you already know. You can be so targeted and specific uh, with the mailing list. You divide that list that you have kind of into two categories. You have a bucket of subscribers. These are people who have said, yes, you know, I want to have a relationship with your business. I want to come alongside of you. I want to be part of what you're doing. The ones that say, well, yeah, you can have my email address. And I don't really want to be contacted a whole lot. Well, they're in that reconnect button, bucket. And maybe once or twice a year, we'll just send them a little reminder email, uh, see, how, see how they're doing, see if they want to get more emails from us. So you want to use language that's inviting, welcoming, and inclusive while feeling exclusive. You want to make them feel that they are part of something that is special, limited, and valuable, that they are now part of the club, if you will. So anyone who's been referred to you, even though they're a new face to you, you're already you're being seen as very favorable in their eyes. They've heard something positive about you and that's why they're using you. So you've got a huge head start. The realtor that we use here in the States, if we refer somebody to him, he, send us, um, he sent us once a bottle of champagne, which was, my wife and I don't drink, so <laughs> that, that was fine, but whatever. And then he sent us a gift card to a local restaurant. I think it was like $50. So just us referring someone to him, my wife and I got to go out to dinner one night. So that's, that's another type of, of referral. And we do also have relationships with um, management companies or tour companies as Excellent. well, where we send them clients, they send us clients. Um, and we've even, I've even seen realtors go around to all of the developments. You know, we have a lot of gated communities here in Costa sure. Rica and they will offer some kind of referral program to the guards at the gate because a lot of times people will yes. come up to the gate and say hey are there any places for sale another okay. idea sorry ben uh, when is one thing that sean did which is um he bought the check presenters for all of the restaurants <clears throat> the most popular restaurants in town and then if they allowed him to put a, a Remax sticker inside with his information. So every single time, you know, these foreigners would come to the restaurants, they open it up for their check. And then right there is a beautiful picture of the area with Sean's information. Um, so that's kind of like a win-win. He's purchasing something for the, for the restaurants and um, the restaurants are advertising his name. You know, Mike Simons does a really good job getting referrals too. Maybe Mike, if you want to step in and share. So truthfully, my entire business now, 95% of my business is referrals. Um, my agents know I don't get any leads off of any of our Remax websites and I haven't in well over a decade. So every, literally everything is either a referral or new business that I'm drumming up, you know, doing some of the other stuff that I do. So everybody knows my, my website's tank tops, flip flops, and that's been my brand now for quite a while. And, you know, one of the things that I do, my agents all here know, but I do a charity t-shirt. I do these tank tops, flip flops, t-shirts, and we give every single dollar to charity. We've raised about $60,000 on uh, the last couple of years for yes. local companies here in town. And it's great because I have every single person in town wearing my shirt. So everybody buys my shirt, gives the money to charity, and then every single person in town is walking around with my brand. So it's the freest Perfect. 
advertising that you can get in the entire world. So, you know, as far as referrals, I have different types of referrals. So, you know, what Hannah was talking about is literally bartenders, waitresses, tour guides. You know, I tell them, I give them cards all the time and say, hey, someone needs a piece of real estate, send them my way. And then when I have money for them, I mean, I wait until, you know, they're standing there with five other bartenders and I walk up, and plop down three, four, 500 bucks and say, hey, thanks for referring me. And I walk out of the bar and everybody's like, holy shit, that guy just gave him $500. Right. See, I don't do that to other clients, right? Like my professional clients and my people that buy from me, I don't give them cash referrals unless they're real estate agents. But I, you know, I encourage all of my buyers instantly to just say, hey, do you have any friends who would be interested in owning a piece of real estate? I'm constantly reaching out to my previous buyers, telling them to refer their clients, their friends. And then, you know, I take care of them by buying them a nice dinner. What I personally like to do instead of a gift certificate, and it's a little bit different where Ben is because he's in a huge U.S. type market, but here we're in a smaller market. So, you know, I, I take my clients to dinner personally you know, when they refer somebody or when they buy something from me. And then that gives me a chance to build a relationship with them on a friendship basis. And anytime I hear that they gave out my name, I call them up, take them out at least for a beer or lunch or breakfast or something. So, and then, and then I'm really aggressively working the real estate network, um, obviously of Remax and others as well. I'm constantly reaching out to real estate agents, uh, especially now, now is a great time. I mean, especially if you go to areas that are really screwed right now, you know, New York, Miami, Toronto, and just start reaching out to real estate agents through the network and say, hey, listen, you know, you're probably not doing a lot of business. Why don't you start uh, emailing everybody on your mailing list and seeing how many of them would like to come to Costa Rica? By the way, we have almost no deaths. We have the best mortality rate in the world. We have the lowest active coronavirus. And by the way, it's 90 degrees. The palm trees are swaying and the beers are cold. Um, and see if you can reach out to some agents that are just sitting at home in Toronto or New York or wherever, not doing any business, wondering how they're going to make money and say, why don't you take a couple days and just start emailing every single person on your mailing list and say, hey, are you interested in getting out of this hell hole and going to Costa Rica and see if you can start to create some referrals to some people through some real estate agents? Because that's pretty much how I built my whole business is I'm constantly staying in touch with real estate agents. I'm asking them, I'm asking them, please refer your clients to me. I tell them why I give them a reason why about Costa Rica. Of course, I pay them a 25% referral fee. I pay a lot of referral fees out to real estate agents. And then again, I'm going back to my previous clients, people in the town that I know that like me and say, hey, tell people about me, please refer me. And then, you know, the local guys, the fishing guys, the taxi drivers, the bartenders, you know, I'm always telling them, hey, give them my name, give them my name. And then when a sale comes through, those are the people I give some cash to. So, and the last thing that I'm doing, everybody knows, um, is I do a newsletter. Now I'm able to write a lot more than I ever have because I have a lot more time sitting at home. So I'm trying to get a newsletter out every week where before I might do one every month. And my newsletters are not about real estate. I mean, I talk about real estate and why you want to live here and this is a great place to come, but I don't send listings. Very rarely do I send listings. In my newsletter, I'll say to them, hey, if you're interested in some information about a property, email me. But you know, being on all, having all these realtors on my mailing list also means I'm on all of their mailing lists, which means I get 100 emails a day from agents around the world. And every one of them is the same thing. Check out my new listing at 497 East 17th Street. You're like, delete, delete, delete. There's nothing exciting about that. But then there's a few agents around the world that are writing to me about their market. They're telling me there's this girl, Lisa, and she's in, in South Padre Island, Texas, which is kind of like Costa Rica. It's an island and it's warm and people go there on vacation and it's a second home market. And all she talks about is all the cool stuff going on on South Padre Island. And then she'll say, okay, by the way, click here if you want to see my listings. So that's somebody's email I want to read because it's exciting. And she's talking about the parade and they had this and they had that and they had the boat and the new marina. Those are the things people want to read about, you know, not just your newest listing. So we live in an incredible place. I mean, we have so much to offer and everybody on this screen lives in a different place and talk about what's going on in your place. Talk about your rainforest, talk about your monkeys, talk about the whales, talk about surfing, whatever. Those are the things that are going to make people want to connect with you.